I want to know from you guys and ladies, what is your opinion of Martin Luther King Jr.? Have you ever thought about him at all? What's your impression of him? I liked what he, that he was stood up for what, was, what he thought was right. Oh, okay. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a test. I just want to know your impression of him, that's all. That's about it? That's about all I know. You like the fact that he stood up for what he believed was right? Yeah. He wasn't afraid to? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's good. Anybody else? Miss, how about you? You heard of him, right? Uh, everybody's heard of him. Oh, okay. And what's your impression of him, personal impression of Martin Luther King Jr.? Uh, very good man. He, uh, the, the main thing I think of whenever I hear his name is he was a man who wanted uh, black and whites to get to, to, uh, to be as one, you know, to put aside the differences and everyone to all get along. Have you, have you ever read upon him, read anything about him, read his writing or anything, any of his books? Not really. So you never researched him at all? No, only what I saw on TV. Only what you saw on TV? Okay, how about you? Same here. You never read on your own about King? No. Just what you saw on TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of him, right? He was truly a great man. In what he way? Was. In what way? And uh, for instance, uh, uh, he was the leader of, of the, uh, the drive for equality so that, uh, you know, the black people would be no different than the white people. In other words, what he said is to be judged by the content of your character rather than by the, con by the color of your skin. And what, was, what really made him great is that he was able to, uh, uh, in other words, lead the movement that was going on and, and uh, nonviolence. That was really, really important right. because and the man really had a lot of courage too. He really did, you know. I mean, he got arrested, I don't know how many times, thrown into jail, I don't know how many times. Yeah. And, uh, it doesn't take knew, a lot of courage to go to jail. A lot of black people in jail. Yeah, well, but... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, he knew that his life, I mean, he put his life on the line. Yeah. That's really what he did, you yeah. see. And, uh, I mean, that, that's what made him a great man. Have you ever read up on him? I read, oh. you know what, the only thing I read was his speech that he gave uh, in, in D.C., Oh, okay. it, was, it was a phenomenal speech. Who's with that? I had a dream? Yes. I have a dream? I have a dream, yeah. yes. Oh, okay. It was one of the best speeches I've... Can you remember what you liked about that speech? Well, the, you know what? He really addressed the issues. He really did. Oh. You see? He reminded America uh, of, uh, you know, what, 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 what it says in the Declaration of Independence, you know? All men are created equal, okay? Right. Okay. That, you know, that, uh, you know, he, he, he really brought it up. And it was a, a, it was a very eloquent speech. and was just a, a really great speech. How about you, Susie? You heard of him, right? Yes. And what you, what's your impression of him? Um, you know, when you're asking me this morning, I don't have a, I really don't feel like I know that much about him. Yeah. Really. That's a very good point. It's interesting how we can think we know something about something, and then when someone asks us about it, you got to focus on it. You realize you really don't personally know that much about it. But yet we could go along in life thinking that we do. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, put the nonviolence thing in proper perspective. Um, Jesus believed in nonviolence where it was appropriate, and Jesus believed in violence where it was appropriate. Right. Did he not get a cord of whip and drive those people out of the out of the temple? Did he not have his apostles carry swords to stave off robbers? And how about King? And King, same way. I'm sure he put the wood to his kids' backside when they needed it. And uh, he did believe in the police protecting people with force and violence uh, when need be, because some people they don't care about their conscience. Now, Martin Luther King did that? Yes. How you know? Now, the one thing he did believe is that America had a conscience. There are some countries that have no conscience. You can't be trying to change them nonviolently. 
some dictators, they don't have a conscience. They have to be blown up. How do you know that uh, Martin Luther King believed that America had a conscience? Because he, he, his strategy was to um, engage their conscience, to uh, let them see where they're wrong, and he knew that, in, that if he did that in their hearts, they would, they would uh, come around eventually. And did you read this about him? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've done research on him? A little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was concerned about the poor, too. Is that right? Yeah. You've heard that before, right? Okay, he was concerned about the poor. And yet, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but according to the stats, 40% of American people are poor today. Now, I don't know what they mean by poor because I haven't seen any poor people in America in a long time. Now, even the poorest person in America is fatter than the fattest person. And you can't be poor and be fat. <laughs> Look at Africa. They're not, they are poor and they're not fat. Isn't that true? Yeah. So I don't know what they mean by poor. But uh, let me ask this. Uh, Jesus said that the poor will always be around. Anybody heard that? Yeah. Will always be around. You heard that message before? No. You never heard Jesus say that? Okay. What does that mean to you? You read that in the Bible, at least heard it, right? I have. Jesus said that the poor will always be around. And what does that mean to you when you hear that? Poor in spirit. In spirit, what do you mean? Uh, not, not physically poor? Like no food and stuff? That too. Uh, poor in spirit. Um, did he say made. poor in spirit? Um, no. You just made that up? No, it's, it's, <laughs> you asked me what, what I thought of it. No, I know. I'm telling you what I thought of it. <laughs> And what you thought it meant poor in spirit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The way they're thinking, the way they're living is causing them to have no money and live in poverty. Oh, okay. The primary reason the poor will always be around is because they don't wake up. They're spiritually asleep. They're operating in darkness, and they cannot see. And Christ knew that... Most people, a lot of folks, are not going to spiritually wake up because once you wake up and you become conscious, when you come into the presence of God, you become conscious, and once you become conscious, nothing can hold you back in life. All your needs are met, all everything, spiritually, financially, and everything else. But the average person uh, 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 are asleep, and that's why they stay in that situation. And you're right, it is a spiritual thing. It has nothing to do, it has little or nothing to do with food or material thing. It's spiritual. And when you're asleep, life is a hell. Have you noticed that? You feel like you're falling apart. But when you're awake, when you're in the presence of God, you never feel like you're falling apart. There's no such thing as being poor because you're, you're, you're God's son or daughter and all your needs are already always met. But that's what he meant. People are spiritually dead. You got to wake people up. For more information or to purchase a copy of this show, visit us on the web at www.bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-BOND.